Hey everyone, this is Pete. Welcome back to Atari ST A to Z, a series of short playthroughs of Atari ST games, some of which I grew up with and some of which are new to me. Today is one of the former. This is Pac Mania, originally developed by Namco for the arcades and ported to the Atari ST by Grand Slam. I believe that this game was um, exclusive to Europe and Australia, so the PAL regions. Um, so, yeah. In your face, Americans, I guess. <laughs> so, Pac-Mania, if you're unfamiliar, is um, was a later instalment in the Pac-Man series, um, which its main twist was the fact it unfolded in isometric quasi-3D rather than um, the, the top-down maze view of the original. But other than that, it was basically Pac-Man. But the, the 3D perspective brought its own considerations. So most notably the fact that you could only see part of the maze on the screen at once. Which meant that you, you had to react a bit quicker to what was going on. And you couldn't plan ahead in quite the same way as you could in the original Pac-Man. They did actually make a point of giving the ghosts different personalities in this though. I know they did in the original Pac-Man, but they actually made a point of actually representing those personalities with actual different facial expressions on the ghosts. And so you can learn to recognise them by their faces as well as um, just by their colours as you would do in the original. You can also jump! Which is a way out of um, the sort of situation you'd find yourself in in original Pac-Man where you'd end up cornered. However, it's not a get out of jail free card by any means. So this also lacks a few things that people have come to associate with Pac-Man over the years. Like, for example, you can't sort of skid round corners um, like you can in... I, I forget if you could actually do that in the original Pac-Man, but you certainly can in the more recent releases of Pac-Man, like Pac-Man Championship Edition and such like. Um, but, you've, yeah, you've got very hard corners in this, so you can't skid round them to go faster than the Ghost. Um, but at the same time, you do have the jump function... And so that's a different way of getting yourself an advantage over the ghosts. It was these catchy musical themes that go along with the action as well. And it's quite nice for an arcade port from the era to actually have the same music as the arcade version, because very often what would happen is... Um, the sound artist for the port would would just end up composing their own composition for it and often those compositions would end up being very good pieces of music in their own right so for example if you think of things like rob hubbard's um pieces of music for commando on various platforms those are now pretty iconic pieces of the 8-bit era of home computing um but in a lot of cases those pieces of music were different from what was in the original arcade machine which was disappointing for some people coming back to them from a modern perspective it's actually quite interesting to see these differences all similarities as it happens so as far as ports go, I, I mean, I'm not hugely familiar with the Pac-Mania arcade machine. Um, but this always felt like a... Certainly a very competent game in its own right. I 
and it's pretty smoothly scrolling, which is always pleasant to see on the ST because scrolling wasn't its strong suit. Um, but yeah, pretty good port all around, really. Let's just have a quick go on the hardest level. Um, just to see a later world. So, let's go to Sandbox Land. We get a bonus of 150,000 points if we win. And this also introduces some things that happen later on in the game. So you have jumping ghosts as well as Pac-Man being able to jump. Which kind of negates that advantage you can give yourself by jumping over the ghost. You have to be careful that you, you don't just leap straight into a ghost waiting more. I do quite like the way the music sort of dynamically remixes itself when you get a power pill and gets rid of the rhythm section. And so that's a nice audible cue. Oh, and you also have power-ups in this, that's right. So the green power pill that appears in the center there allows you to go much faster than normal. Which, as you can probably imagine, can be both a blessing and a curse. We've also got a lot more ghosts than you would have in regular Pac-Man as well. Which can make for some interesting situations. Oh. See, that is trouble with the, the quite narrow scope of your viewpoint in this. Is that it's rather difficult to see where um, the rest of your um, the rest of the pills are. And so ideally what you want to try and do is clear out each section completely before you move on somewhere else. I always quite like this trend in sort of late 80s, early 90s arcade games where you could um, start at a later stage and get a significant score bonus if you could survive that the first stage. It was seen a lot in uh, Atari games. So things like Clax had it. Um, but it was also seen in stuff like Pac-Mania that we've, uh, we've got here. It was just a means of... Well, it's, it's basically a, a different means of getting a high score. So rather than having to spend a long time playing through levels that might ultimately end up being insultingly easy for you, you can simply start at a later stage and be rewarded for it with an appropriate amount of points that is pretty similar to the amount of points you would get anyway if you'd worked your way up. Oops. Right, next world. The jungly steps. So these sort of interstitial screens were kind of riffing on the the cutscenes that were in the original Pac-Man. The uh, it was one of the first ever examples of cutscenes that we saw in games, of course. Obviously, fairly laughable by m oh god, you're fast. Oh, yeah, this is difficult. <laughs> I'm 
concentrating now, see? Giving it to my full attention. Oh no, it's all over. Well, a well deserved high score for that. And there we are. That is Pac Mania for the Atari ST. I say originally developed by Namco for the arcade and ported to the Atari ST for Europe and Australasia by Grand Slam. There you go. Hope you enjoyed that. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you again next time. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please help out the channel by leaving a like or a comment and subscribing. New episodes of Atari A to Z are on Tuesdays and Atari ST A to Z on Thursdays. Check out Atari A to Z .wordpress.com for a full archive. Do please also check out my other projects, MoeGamer.net, where I explore Japanese and Japanese inspired games from yesterday and today, and VideoPackGames.wordpress.com, which aims to catalogue the small but well formed library of the Philips G7000 Video Pack Computer, also known as the Magnavox Odyssey 2. You can also support my work on Patreon or buy me a coffee. You can find links to do both down in the video description. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.